initial is equal to, well, the same stuff over here, except final, one half mg final squared plus mgh final. All right, that's what we're trying to find right there. What's equal to zero? Initial what? Okay, so the initial kinetic energy is zero because di equals zero. What else is equal to zero? Say it again. Say initial height zero? Yeah. That's, that would have been fine. We oh. could have done that. If the initial height is zero, what would the final height be? Negative 50. Yeah. But you backed out. Does we said so. Alright. So now that's zero. Because h final is equal to zero. All right, so we're now down to this, mgh is equal to 1 half mv squared. So from a different point of view, we start out with all this potential energy at the top and no kinetic energy. As he's going down, the potential energy is dropping, kinetic energy is rising, and then he you know, goes over a hill, it oscillates back and forth, and eventually it ends with all potential, no kinetic. And all potential because we established that zero there. Now, uh, we have this. Uh, I didn't give you his mass. If you're given a problem where you're not given the mass, again, one of two things. One, you don't need it. Or two, I made a mistake. If you ask me during a quiz or a test, uh, you can give the mass. What's the mass? And I go, oh, um, let's make it. And then I just give you a number. You probably don't need it. If I go, oh, then I probably made a mistake. So, if you're comfortable with it, we can just, since I have mass in both terms, I can cancel it out. Or, if you're not comfortable with it, just make up a number, not zero. Don't put zero for the mass. So, let's just divide the mass out. So we have MGH, the initial is equal to one half in the final square. Now, if you want to make up a mass for this odd, for the person, make it a kilogram. That way you're multiplying by one. So we're left with 9.8 times the initial height of 50 is equal to one half times my final speed squared. This is 490 is equal to one half final speed squared. 980 is equal to final speed squared, and the final speed is the square root of 980. Which is, is that about 33? 32.7, something about to tell me. 31.3. 31.3? Questions to hear because I'm going to make it look more difficult in just a moment. Then let's make it look more difficult. All right, so he goes down to the bottom, he has a good time, he's going at about 65 miles an hour at the bottom. He goes back up, gets up, gets the chair lift, the ski lift, comes back to the top, ready to do it again. What he doesn't realize is while he was doing all that, there was a cave in. <sighs> to a well that drops down to, down to basically the same height as that. Now on the bottom of it, if you're concerned for the stick figure safety, there are cotton balls, clouds, and kittens. He does not land on any of the kittens. If 
know, cats at the bottom, who would care if he landed on them. Kittens, no, we'll save those. But he will land safely, and the kittens will show him the way out. How fast is he going right before he hits, lands on the cut balls and clouds? I didn't hear what you said. So oh, I said 80 miles an hour? No, not that fast. No. Well, let's... So everything's the same as what we just did, but at this point he's suddenly in the air. While he's in the air, what are the non-conservative forces acting on him? Ignoring air resistance. Yes, still weight. Mm -hmm. Non-conservative force? There are none. Here, the non-conservative work is zero because it's perpendicular to the motion. Here, non-conservative work is zero because there is no non-conservative force. So, as we go over here, so energy is conserved. What changes in the problem for how fast he's going at the bottom of the hole? What's different? I mean velocity. Well, that's what we're trying to find. Well, yes, velocity would be different because it's definitely going in a different direction. Is the final speed different? Probably. Well, let's see what else changes. All right, is the initial kinetic energy still zero? Is the initial is the final height still zero? Why? Yes, if I heard correctly. So we're left with this. Uh, mass still cancels out. G is still nine point eight meters per second squared. The initial height is still fifty because he ends up fifty meters below where he started. Nothing changes. It's the same problem. So how fast is he going right before he hits the clouds and cotton balls? 3.3 meters per second. Yep. It is indeed the exact same problem. Or roughly 65 miles per hour. Not 80 as some would have you believe. Now, when he gets to the bottom, oh, questions up to there before I change the problem slightly. All right, he gets down there, he's safely, the kitten show on the path, there's a, it turns out there's a door there, and then there's some stairs inside here, and he gets back up to the top. While he was climbing all the way back to the top, it stood more, and this all filled in. The kittens are safely in here. Cats, again, yeah, who cares? How many cat people do we have in here? Uh, just want to know who I just insulted. Or perhaps you complain about them too. I had a student years ago who, was, who objected to my vilification of cats, but I had heard her complain about her cats so often I, I wasn't buying it. All right, so now, also while he was going up and it filled in, the owners of the ski resort decided to put a giant spring at the bottom. No, the way ski resorts do. And the Spring constant, and we'll make 40 newtons per meter. And what that means is that to stretch or compress this ideal spring, it takes 40 newtons to compress it a meter, or 40 newtons to stretch, to, sorry, stretch it a meter or compress it a meter. It'll take 80 newtons to do two meters. It'll take 120 newtons to do three meters, and so on for an ideal spring. It's also ideal, ideal spring. It doesn't have mass, so I don't have to worry about that. And the ideal spring is not going to interfere with itself. So if you take a slinky and stretch it out, there's only so far you can actually compress it. But for an ideal spring, we're good. And we can compress it however far we need to. And then what I want to know is how far will the spring compress?
while he's skiing down the slope, still, the old work is the old, uh, sorry, weight is the only thing doing work, conservative. When he gets to the spring, he's now being pushed that way, or he's pushing the spring that way. The ideal elastic force, conservative or not conservative? It was on the list. So again, energy is conserved. We are starting in the exact same spot. I do need to give one other piece of information. His mass does matter now. We'll make his mass 70 kilograms. And I want to keep, uh, we'll just start with that. I'm about to ask the question again. I want you to dream about the situation. What's the formula for kinetic energy? Better than the last time. The enthusiasm, I think, is gone. So uh, just make sure when you regale your friends and families later about this day, make sure you put a lot of enthusiasm into how you said 1 FMV squared and that everyone else just did it badly, but you were perfect. What about the formula for potential energy, well, I've got two conservative forces here. What's the formula for potential energy associated with weight? Yes, I skipped the, what's the formula for potential energy? What is the one associated with weight? What is the one associated with the ideal elastic spring? That delta x is how far it's, it compresses from equilibrium. That is the slicking in there. I suspect that slicky is the other way. All right. So if you take a slick, I'm assuming everyone here has played with a slicky at some point in your life. And if not, you really should buy a slicky. Buy a metal one, the plastic ones. All right. So if you take a slinky and you grab it by the end here, it's gonna hang down a certain amount. That's the equilibrium right there, however far it just hangs. Then I can stretch it or compress it, and how far I stretch it, compress it from where its equilibrium is, that's what we're talking about here. So the spring is just sitting there, as a former colleague once said, fat, dumb, and happy, and it's in equilibrium. The skier's gonna come down, hit the spring, compress it, so how far it compresses will be this number right here. And this is the initial. And then the same stuff except final. And the final squared plus mgh final plus one half k delta x final squared. All right. What is zero? Which are, we have six terms now. Which of these are zero? different from the other one because where now it hits something it slows down how far it compresses deals with the point at which it stops okay. Wait, so why would that be zero? Uh, if he still if he hits the spring and starts compressing it if he's still moving it's going to compress some more so we need that how far the spring compresses depends on at what point he stopped and it's about to get slung backwards oh, okay. so he has to stop yeah so he has to stop at that just like when we dealt with object being thrown, thrown into the air, at the peak, it stops when it turns around. Okay. Anything else? What did you cut on there? Uh, final point. What? Why? Because. Because you were fat. Or because.
the exact same. Or I guess we could consider it a new problem, go with, because Briley said so. Because Green or Briley said so. All right, and we got one more that we can set is equal to zero, implied in the problem. We can go step by step. If the final height is zero, is the initial height zero? Does he end up at the same height that he started? Yes. Somebody said yes? So this is the same height as this? It's not even 50 meters. Yeah, it's 50 meters taller. The initial height is 50 meters above the bottom height. So initial height, not zero. Uh, final displacement? Definitely not zero, because that's what we're trying to find. What about the initial displacement? Yeah, because the spring is sitting there. Nothing's, hit, nothing's hitting it. So this is also zero, because the spring is in equilibrium to start with. So we've now reduced it down to just my initial gravitational potential energy at the, is equal to my final elastic potential energy. So we start out with all this gravitational potential, no kinetic and no elastic potential. As it, as he moves down, kinetic increases, the gravitational potential decreases and it fluctuates back and forth until at the end, the bottom of the ski slope, it's all kinetic and no elastic potential. And then as he hits it, his kinetic drops, it's slowing down and the elastic potential increases because it's getting compressed. So now, plug each other, 70 times 9.8 times 50 is equal to 1 half times 40 times delta x final squared. So, whatever that is. Someone's going to share with us, it's going to be equal to 20 times, I'm just going to write x squared. Simplify my language. Let me write it. So that spring is going to compress 41 meters, about half a football field. It's a big spring. Now, all of that energy that he started with, all that gravitational potential energy with which the skier started, is now into elastic potential. And that elastic potential is not going to last there for long because then he's going to, that spring is going to it's fully compress. It's now going to shoot back. How far up the ski slope is he going to go? A slight, breeze, a slight breeze hits him and he goes back down and you know, the cycle repeats. We ignore air resistance except for the fact that it got him started. Oh. 
don't forget to watch the videos. Some of it will be a repeat of what I've done here. Some of it will be additional detail. And it should be a couple extra examples. I thank you for your indulgence for your flexibility in the fact that I am specific for I got everyone who's here, so Elizabeth would have been no name. Uh, Sasha's with us. Doris 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 with Thank you. Oh. Let's stop this. Because it really doesn't need to record this part.